Hey everyone, Pete Calandra here. On today's video, I'd like to show you how I've put together my studio for live streaming on both YouTube and Zoom, as well as for general video content creation. The main elements I'm using are a combination of hardware and software. In the hardware realm, I have the Roland VR1 HD video switcher, a UA Apollo X4 audio interface, and a Korg Nano Key Studio. There are three cameras, the Sony AX53 camcorder, a Nikon ZFC, and a Nikon Z6. My voiceover microphone is the TZ Audio Stellar X2 Vintage. For lighting up the studio, I'm using two newer flat panel LEDs and a few smaller LEDs by Aperture and LumCube. It's also important that I be able to keep everything set up and out of my way so that when I'm doing my regular music work, it's not cluttered. So for this purpose, I found that the table clamp stands work the best and I've got almost everything mounted on one. This keeps my floor space really clear. One other thing, my headphones are Sennheiser HD 555s. I've had these for years. There are better headphones, but these work fine for me. The main hub of my studio where all the hardware is routed into and all of the video comes out of is the free software called OBS. If we look over here in the OBS screen, I'm taking this now with a camera as opposed to capturing the screen because you would get the video feedback. If we look down in this area here, you could see that I've got one, two, three, four, five scenes. And as I scroll through them all, you can see the five different scenes that I use in my normal streaming world. In order to get this to work smoothly and efficiently for me, I wanted to get some sort of MIDI control so that I didn't have to have my mouse clicking on the scene changes. I could just push something on a controller and have that change the scene for me. In order to get that to happen, I had to download the MIDI plugin for OBS. And there's a link in the description box below for where that is. Another thing I needed to do was to be able to mute the microphone without having to go over and use the mouse and mute it on the console. So I had to download a free piece of software that enabled me to set up a MIDI command to do that. Right now we'll go to a split screen and you'll see that on my Korg controller here, if I push this pad, Then I push this pad, it's me. I push this pad, we'll get just the computer screen. We'll push this pad and get picture in pi picture with me in the corner. And then using the VR1, I can switch the camera view, which is really slick. And then this is my end screen. And then over here, this will mute and unmute the mic. So I could show you that over here. So now you see a console in the screen. And if I push this here, you'll see the mute go into effect right now. And then I'm back. And I usually keep this on my right screen because I've got three screens here. The way that this all works to start off with is that I've got this TZ audio microphone. It's on a boom arm stand that's attached to my desk and I can move it around. So if I wanted to show you, I can move it up here, it's out of focus. I've got that running into the UA Apollo. Right here you can see that I've got the UA610. And then it's going into the pool tech just to beef up some of my low end and a little high end. And then I've got that going through the LA2A. And you can see that there's very little happening. If I got really close, you can see that starts to move. But I'm not really adding compression, it's just coloring the sound a little bit. I can mute that very easily and come back. The muting really is helpful for me if I'm in my film scoring class and I want to play a film on my computer screen or I want to play a piece of music on my computer screen. I don't want to have my live mic picking up my sound in my room. So I can mute that and then that gets taken out of the equation. All my audio in my system, both Pro Tools and my Mac computer, is being routed into the Apollo X4 and I'm taking 
a quarter inch jack, stereo jack out of the headphone output and putting it into the line inputs of the VR1 HD, the Roland switcher. And then that's where the audio for everything is being routed into OBS where I'm recording it and you could see the meter on OBS is moving. And then I'm capturing this and recording a video here. So that's basically how I, I got that set up. So let's take a look at the under the hood at the MIDI stuff inside of OBS. You could see here that there are a bunch of devices here. Let me just zoom in. And the VR1, I've got the Nano Control 2, which is my general controller, my YC88, which is my uh, my MIDI controller, and then the Nano Key Studio. So devices and configure, you see that I've got this set up. So each one of these is being fed from channel one on the Nano Key Studio. And the message type is control change. And I've got it set up 120, 121, 122, 123, and 124. The reason I chose those numbers is that I don't use them for anything else that I typically do with MIDI on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I've selected the action, which is do transition. And then the name of each scene is right here. And that works out really well. Just so that you know, when I go back to devices, I've got this duplicated on the nano control. The same thing with some of the knobs that I don't really use. And I've changed it here. So I have a redundant system and that works out really, really well. Let's take a look at the background MIDI app for the UA control. There'll be a link for this in the description box below, but you'll see that I've got the Apollo X4 analog one, and I've got the parameter mute with CC 127 coming from the Nano Key Studio. Momentary button, and it's just basically on and off. And that works out really well. So I could do live switching just by pushing some buttons on my controller. Now, as far as my cameras go, I've got the three cameras set up like this. And if I'm doing a live performance, I can set it up so that the camera that's looking at me, I've got another camera, another Nikon Z6 II, that I could set up anywhere else in the studio and just plug into this port and replace my talking heads camera. And then I can have a nice three camera image that I can switch back and forth when I'm doing live performing. Or if I want to show some of the students, you know, like keyboard and mouse stuff right here and continuous controllers, it's pretty bright now. I can adjust that and make that a little darker if I wanted to. And that works out really well. Yeah, a little sloppy here. So that makes it very versatile. Now, there's one other thing I want to talk about is getting this into Zoom. Now, you guys have, there's plenty of videos of how to set this OBS up to uh, stream over YouTube or Twitch or Facebook. You just have to get the key and set that up. But that's not what my video is about. It's about how I use this here. I also use this for Zoom. So let's go to the split screen again so that I can talk. And let's open up Zoom. And I'll just start a, a, a fake meeting here. And I want to start the meeting. And I'll start video and you won't see anything. Right? What has to happen, and I'll switch to my camera view, is I have to start the virtual camera, and that's another plugin that you have to download. And Zoom can see that, and now you're going to get the, uh, the feedback screen, which I can't stand. But what can I tell you? But you can see that I've got that. So basically, I've got my OBS set up as my virtual camera. And for audio, I've got my microphone is the VR1 HD. And the speaker, what I'm listening back to, is the Universal Audio Thunderbolt. And the reason I'm listening back to this instead of the VR1 HD is because it has a better volume control for the headphones right here, and it doesn't take a mini jack. It takes quarter-inch jack on my SPL2 control, which is my speaker controller. So I can just plug my regular headphones in there, and it works really well. So there you have it. All right. Let me end this. The beauty of this system for me is that everything is almost pre-edited. I have to go in and do adjustments because I, I certainly do different takes when I do pre-recorded videos because I, I'm sort of jamming into the box when I'm talking about these things. I do have a loose script, but I try to cut out ahs and ums and things like that and keep, keep it moving and flowing. And 
it's so much easier to do it this way. I'm doing it live on the spot as opposed to going into a video editor with three or four different video streams that I have to edit together into a unified whole. It takes so much less time to do this. And it actually, for me, is almost better because it's I'm used to doing it now. I've been doing it for a year and a half and I sort of into a flow and I just go with it. I have something that looks good and sounds good and it takes the least amount of time for me to make. I still have to put together the lessons, which takes the most amount of time, but the post-production gets cut down greatly. And if I want to play around with the audio, I can just export an audio file into Pro Tools and do any sweetening or mastering, and then sync it back up after I'm done. So this is a quick look into how I create content for YouTube and how I do my live streaming classes on Zoom. I've been teaching college classes. This is the fourth semester that I've been doing it, and I'll be doing it again in the spring. I have to have something that looks good, keeps the kids involved, interested, and that they can go up on YouTube and watch afterwards and get really good audio quality as opposed to the eh, Zoom audio quality. Anyway, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave any comments or questions down below. Once again, I've been Pete Calandra, and I'll catch you on the next one.